State of the Nation with Zororo Makamba. Our sport is in trouble. Everywhere you look, there's chaos. Football. We've just been suspended from Kosafa. As for AFCON, let's not even talk about that tournament. Let's just pretend AFCON never happened. It's better that way. There was no AFCON. It didn't happen. Simple. Cricket. Big news. We have been suspended by the International Cricket Council. We can't play cricket until the board is reinstated. Rugby? We're struggling to beat teams that we used to beat for practice matches. Now, it's pretty bad right now. But shout out to the Zimbabwe Gems. Our netball team just came back from the World Cup. They finished in the top eight. Pretty impressive for first timers. They did so well despite all the challenges they faced in the run-up of the tournament. Imagine what they could have achieved with better preparations. What the Zim Gems did was remind us of one thing. We have the talent. What we don't have is good leadership. And this is what we want to talk about today on this week's State of the Nation. Since 1980, we've had some success stories in sport. The Golden Girls of 1980, they shocked the world by winning gold at the Olympics. We've had Kilimanjaro, the best heavyweight in Africa in the 1980s. In 1987, Zim played at the Rugby World Cup. Richard Simba was the only black player at that tournament. He scored a couple of tries too. Nick Price was the world's number one golfer for many years. We had Andy Flower, the world's number one test batsman. Peter Androv led up the premiership for 12 years. We had the Davis Cup team, Byron and Wayne Black. Jonica Alfonso was a Commonwealth boxing champion in 98. Many, many others. Elliot Mujaji and Stephen Mujingi. And then of course, Kirsty Coventry, the most successful Olympian on the continent. In September last year, ED surprised us all when he appointed Kirsty to the cabinet. She has one of the toughest jobs in government, cleaning up our sports. It's a dirty job because our sports are dirty. Our sports associations are dirty. The people running our sports are dirty. But cleaning up this dirt is not easy. We've all just found this out. And this is the biggest story in Zimbabwe sports right now. Cricket. Let's get deeper into this. They call it the gentleman's game. Well, whoever called it the gentleman's game wasn't talking about Zim cricket. The ICC suspension didn't just happen. Our game has been dying for many years. Why were we suspended? Well, according to the ICC, it was due to government interference. Now, how did this happen? Let's explain this. Remember, all sports in the country are overseen by the Sports and Recreation Committee, the SRC. Now, these guys are there to make sure that our sports are run properly. So when the SRC found out that ZC had failed to hold their elections properly, they suspended the board. The ICC saw this as interference. Now we are suspended. We could have even been expelled because that would have been a disaster. But how did we get up here? Well, it's because the game fell into the wrong hands. A lot has happened over the past 10 years, but let's draw you to one particular picture here. So you've got three guys, Peter Chungoka, Wilson Manasseh and Ozias Vute. Now these three guys were on the ZC board. They were also on the board of a bank, Medbank. Now ZC needs money. What happens? ZC takes loans from Medbank. The interest rates on the three loans, over 20%. That's a lot. They could have got loans with lower interest rates from the ICC, but they still went with Medbank. Now, because the interest rates were so high, Zim Cricket had spent a lot more money paying back the loan. Now, remember here, Zim Cricket is paying money to a bank, then to three guys who sit on the same Zim Cricket board. <laughs> Amazing. Now, what happens next? Players don't get paid, some tours get cancelled, and basically, the game suffers. That's not all. Here's a bit more. In 2011, the ICC says to Zim Cricket, here's 6 million US dollars. Now, what does ZC do? They put that money into a bank. Which bank? You guessed it, Medbank. Now, the money is put into an account that doesn't even earn interest. Medbank benefits, Zim Cricket gains nothing. In the end, the government had to take over the debt. $19 million. That's how much the taxpayer took over from Zim Cricket. So while the ITC was happy with the Zimbabwean government taking over Zim Cricket's debt, it's not happy when the same government demands better management of the sport. You see how weird this is? So this takes us to the big question. A lot of us have been shouting at Kirsty Coventry. We wanted to take action to clean up our sports. What action can you really take if people just run and claim interference? What can she do? What can any of us do? To get our players playing the game they love, we're going to have to do what the ICC wants. But after that, we will still have a problem to deal with. Now, we're not a big country, so it's easy for us to get bullied by the people that run sports around the world. 
The ICC says it doesn't tolerate interference, but what they don't say is that some animals are more equal than others. Check this out. The Prime Minister of Pakistan openly announced that he had appointed his own guy to run cricket. Now what did the ICC do? Nothing. Listen, the Pakistan vs India match at the recent World Cup, it was watched by 230 million people. ICC isn't losing that kind of money. Now over in Sri Lanka, the government took over cricket last year to clean out corruption. Did ICC suspend Sri Lanka? Hell no. So we have very few options here. Sport in this country is run by bad administrators, but it's clear that we can't clean the game just by firing them. We have to be smarter. To make things work, it's going to take all of us demanding better leadership in sport. It's going to take a lot of us saying, hey, I won't be a spectator anymore. I need to get involved. We've allowed way too many shady characters to take over sport. Remember when FIDA launched his campaign to run Zifa? We all thought it was a joke. But he actually got people to vote for him. Look at him now, he's the big guy in Kosafa. And because we don't have sponsorships, we take any money we can get. That's how we end up with our national team staying at a Prophet's hotel. And that's how you end up with that same Prophet even playing for the national team. Guys, a Prophet in a national team jersey. Seriously. We've always said that we don't want politicians running our sports. We said we want professionals, people who know and love sports. Kirsty represents that. She's an athlete and she's done admin work for the International Olympic Committee. She's seen how sports are run, but she can't win it alone. We need more of our former sports people to get involved. We need business people to step up. We're talking credible business people here, not the type known for shoes and tenders. We've seen that type sponsoring the Warriors before. It never ends well. Our sports facilities are in bad shape. The 1995 All Africa Games left us some decent sports facilities. Look at them now. The Magamba hockey field is now used by churches. The Chitungiza aquatic complex is now used for music shows and not for swimming. Our stadiums are embarrassing. There are many bad people in Zimbabwe, but there are many more good ones. We need you. Sports is a good business. Sports is also a great way to market our country. It unites us. It gives us pride and belonging. It's more than just a game. So it's time we got serious and got involved too. Our sport is in crisis. We need to reclaim our sports from those that captured them. It's time for the good people to step up. The country needs you. It's not a game anymore.